Douglas, you've gone over a lot of these budgets. Does this thing have <laughs> any legs at all up on Capitol Hill? Uh, no. Uh, the, in the, the lingo of the day, it's dead on arrival. Um, it, it's a funny budget in many ways. Uh, the most important issue facing Congress is the deal for discretionary uh, spending in defense and non-defense. Uh, as you know, under current law, uh, we'd snap back to the caps they wrote in, into place years ago, and that's about a $125 billion cut in the discretionary spending. So, you know, finding a way to, to match the spending to what is actually going on right now is important. This budget's silent on that. Uh, they fund the Defense Department through a big gimmick called the Overseas Contingency Account, and they just pretend the, the non-defense discretionary is going to get cut, and it won't be. So it's made them irrelevant for the most important issue uh, up on Capitol Hill. So, so Douglas, to, to those of us who haven't done that budgeting up on that Capitol Hill, because it, it really is a mystery to me, when the president <laughs> requested, and the Republicans requested the big tax cut, they said it will pay for itself because we will get more revenues, we'll grow the economy faster, and that will give us increased revenues and it'll take care of the problem. Now, they're projecting 3% a year, as far as the eye can see. A lot of economists don't believe that number, but let's assume they get that number. Even then, they're not going to balance the budget for 15 years. Doesn't that renege on what the president committed to of 10 years? Uh, the president's never actually had a strong vision for what he wants to do with the budget. And one of the things I at least had hoped we'd see would be some articulation of what, what's the goal. Do we want to eliminate the budget deficit? Do we want to balance debt relative to GDP? Who knows? Um, certainly, it was never going to be the case that the tax cut paid for itself. No tax cut does. Uh, instead, it would increase the amount of debt outstanding, and you'd turn to the task of somehow putting the fiscal path on a sustainable trajectory. To do that, everyone knows you will need good economic growth. That's in here. Uh, you will also need to control spending, but not the tiny sliver that is non-defense discretionary, but the whole array that includes the entitlements. And we're going to need more revenue. So this is not a budget that is good for setting the terms of the debate for this year, neither is it particularly good for telling us how we need to solve our problems in the long run. At the same time, the, the burden of the taxes is really shifting. We can put a chart up that actually shows the percentage paid by individuals as opposed to corporations. Corporations' percentage is going down, actually. Yeah, the, the corporation income tax is not your grandfather's corporation income tax, and this is true globally. Uh, all of our developed country competitors have uh, relied increasingly on value-added taxes to substitute for their corporate taxes. In a global environment, corporate competition is fierce, that tax becomes an issue. We've seen it overseas, we're seeing it in the United States. We just have nowhere else to go but the payroll tax and the individual income tax, and that's where the burden is being uh, put. Uh, the deficit, as you said, as a percentage of GDP, is increasing again. It had gone way up right after yep. the great financial crisis, and then it came down significantly as a percentage of GDP. Now it's going back up again. When does that start to hurt us? Uh, it, going back up in a full employment economy is the troubling thing. If you have a big recession, you expect the budget deficit to go up and then recover as it did. What we see now is prolonged deficit spending in a full employment economy, uh, that has two potential costs. One is the, the big blow up, uh, Greece, Portugal. I don't view that as the likely thing. Instead, it simply saps the vitality of the economy. You are taking investment capital that would otherwise go into productive uh, investments and using it to fund the government. And you're borrowing from abroad so that when you have a productive investment, the returns go overseas, not to our citizens. So in two ways, both the amount of productivity and who gets the benefits of it, these deficits sap our vitality. As an, as an economist, uh, does the fact that we're borrowing that much as you say from overseas sort of guarantee we're going to have a trade deficit? Guarantees we have a trade deficit. You know, there's been a lot of uh, press about the fact that the trade deficit has gone up, not down under President Trump. It was inevitable. Uh, with the tax cuts and the faster economic growth, you get more imports. With the uh, increased budget deficits, you're borrowing from abroad. Both of those lead to bigger deficits. 